So in this example, we're going to look at uh, power plant efficiency or heat engine efficiency. And just to get a flavor of how much energy we're talking about, we're going to compare it to Diablo Canyon, uh, since that's a, a local generator of electricity. And we know Carnot efficiency is given by the equation we derived in the previous uh, screencast, which basically shows you that the efficiency, in other words, how much work you get out for a given amount of heat input, is going to be a function of the two temperatures, how hot your heat source and how cold your, uh, your heat sink. If you can make this zero, then your efficiency would be equal to one. But of course, you, you can't have a heat sink at, at absolute zero. If you had a heat source that was infinitely hot, T equals infinity, then you'd still have an efficiency of one. But of course, that's not possible. So we're always going to end up with an efficiency less than one. So let's look at this example. And so what we're gonna imagine is, instead of using um, a modern power plant, which heats the, the fluid up to a very, very high temperature under pressure, we're going to uh, imagine a very crude steam engine uh, from the 1800s where they would actually just use, uh, early steam engines just had boiling water. So we're limited to the temperature of boiling water. And uh, we're not going to use anything special to cool, like a cooling tower. We're just going to use air. And so it's going to be 25 degrees C. OK, so let's go ahead and, and attack this problem. So first, let's figure out the efficiency of our primitive power plant. So efficiency is a function of those two temperatures. And it's important that we do this in Kelvin. So our cold temperature, we said, was 25 degrees C. Our, oh, this is supposed to be the high temperature there. The high temperature is going to be uh, boiling water, so 373 Kelvins. And this comes out to about 20%, so about 0.2 on our efficiency. Okay, And so that means if we put in 100 joules of heat, we only get 20 joules of work out, okay? All right, so now let's look at the amount of power we need. So the power we required was the amount, or the amount of work we required is equal to one Diablo Canyon, so we'll call it DC. And that amount of work, we said, the amount of, the amount of work generated by those, those uh, electrical turbines in Diablo is about 15, thousand gigawatt hours. So you can convert that to kilowatt hours and then convert that to joules. I'll just do that for you. That comes up to 5.4 times 10 to the 16th joules. Okay. Now that's actually the work output. The question is, how much heat do we need to generate that? Well, since efficiency is defined as the, um, the amount of work that you get out divided by the heat that you put in, we can see that the heat that we need to put in is just going to be the work divided by the efficiency. And the work that we, we want to get out it's 5.4 times 10 to the 16th joules. And the efficiency is only 0.2. So we can see that we're going to have to put in five times as much uh, energy uh, in the form of heat in as what we get out. And so we'll just go ahead and round this to um, 25 times 10 to the 16th joules. So that's the amount of heat we have to put in. And so we could put this, um, this is going to be the heat supplied by burning octane. Okay, And of course, this is a good approximation for burning gasoline. All right, so we need uh, 25 times 10 to the 16th joules of heat and we could supply this by burning octane. 
and we saw earlier that octane had a, a heat of combustion of around 5500 kilojoules. So let's go ahead and put that in terms of joules. That's joules per mole of octane. And so this is going to give us that we need around, let's just round to one sig fig here, five times 10 to the 10th moles of octane. And we can multiply that times the molar mass which we saw earlier um, in one of the in-class exercise, we saw that octane is 114 grams per mole. And so we end up with five times 10 to the, wow, five times 10 to the 12th grams. Okay, so that seems like a lot. So maybe let's put it in a more realistic unit, five times 10 to the 10 to the ninth kilograms. And uh, okay, this still seems like a lot. So let's go ahead and convert this to metric tons. So there's a thousand uh, kilograms in a metric ton. So 10 to the six tons, metric tons. Okay, so that's still a lot. So if we think about this, that's five, let's see, kilomegatons of, of, uh, of octane that we'd have to supply. And so another way of thinking about this is if we divide this by, if we divide this by, uh, by the number of days, we could say, okay, we could do this, we could do this by dividing by 365 days, right? And how much would we have to supply? Well, we have to supply around 1.4 times 10 to the fourth tons per day. Or if we said, okay, well, let's divide that further by the number of hours in a day. This comes out to about 600 tons per hour. So if we wanted to have some sort of primitive steam engine that uh, uh, could supply as much power as Diablo Canyon does and had, you know, a very low Carnot efficiency because the, uh, because the, high temperature is so low and the low temperature is so high, so therefore it has a low Carnot efficiency, we'd have to supply 600 metric tons of, of, of octane, basically of gasoline, to that power plant every hour to keep it running. Um, so anyway, it's impressive that this is actually um, quite a lot of, quite a lot of uh, energy throughput that happens at a modern power plant. And this is possible because uh, the the temperature of the steam turbines at Diablo is, is much higher than, than, uh, than in this problem. And so the Carnot efficiency is several times higher. And, and also, of course, uh, nuclear fuel is much more compact, a much more compact form of energy than, than, uh, than fossil fuels. Uh, and one other simplification, the, uh, a, a boiling water plant um, is typically uses a Rankine cycle, not a Carnot cycle, but for a back of the envelope, one significant figure approximation of Carnot cycle is fine. 